I'm not forgetting about Sean. My prayers go out to him. Any support that, that that is needed, you know, we here at Bad Boy, we still here for him. And you know, we know he's on Def Jam, and we wish, we wish him the best of luck. It was an unfortunate incident. Nothing that the man didn't, um, meant to do. There's nothing that the man meant to do. That means he is basically pointing the finger and say, yeah, Shine didn't mean to shoot those people in the club, but it's an unfortunate situation. That right there is Diddy. After the case was over and he was profound guilty, Puffy, who was there, says that Shine was the one who shot those people in the club. Damn. That's crazy. Talk is cheap, motherfucker! You push the envelope. Now everybody knows about the situation in uh, the nightclub in New York shooting, but you can't talk about it because you're in court. But uh, what was you thinking? Were you thinking, I got every, I, have, I came from nothing, I got everything, and now I'm about to lose it? What, what was going through your mind at that point? Man, I was just praying from the precinct, you understand, to when I got my bill, you understand? The next day I was like, yo, I got to be in the studio. You understand? Because it was like that whole year, man, I was just getting my mind right. He was about to shoot the video for Bad Boys and all that. You understand? So I was just praying like, sure. God, you know, you know, you know where my heart is at. You know how I do. You know I ain't wrong. You understand? So just give me this. 105, one is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got the homie on the line, Sean Pope. Yeah, yeah, top of the morning, top of the morning. What's happening in New York City? What's going on, Sean? Ain't none, man. I'm I'm here, you know, out, out here in Paris. I made it off the island for all the scumbags out there. You understand? In California, talking reckless, I made it off the island. So I'm in Paris at the plaza, waiting. It's a countdown. John, this is Charlemagne the God, the man you call the slut on Twitter. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the one that got stuck up by by, by finger point. Yeah, I, I heard about nah, that. That, that, that wasn't true, but you know that wasn't the truth. But but listen, man, I, you know this this is all <laughs> right? my, my whole thing is consistency, right? Okay. Like Sean has never been inconsistent. You dig? Like like I was on the island, I was in the mountains. Like you know what I'm saying? You never heard nothing reckless about me. You know what I'm talking about like like there's no inconsistent there's no p holes poked in what I do and what I represent you know what I'm saying when I came out the records was trash I admit that you did cuz I lost my voice but we can't start comparing records to real life and what I actually did you understand my credibility no, no, sorry, your, listen, your street credibility has never been in question from a musical standpoint, that's all I ever critique you on. The music you put out it was trash. is garbage. You right? yeah, yeah. It was, it, no, no, no. The, it was trash. You got to listen to that Gangland album. That Gangland album is what it is. Where's, yeah, where, where's that at? That's on that Piff. I got a couple hundred thousand downloads on GP. That's just self financing. But listen to that. All right, y'all. How y'all doing, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar. I'm your host, BDB. Now, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. This is when Shine first got released out of prison, right? As you can see with his hair, with all the curls and everything like that. I don't know what he was got going on over there. I don't know exactly what that's about. Some type of religion thing. I don't know, right? But that's neither here nor there. When he first got out of prison, you know, um, he felt as though like his rap career was going to take off because, you know, now that he got quote unquote street credibility, you know, he could go out there and make an album and everybody going to buy it. Unfortunately, his rap career after leaving prison um didn't work out for him you know what i'm saying and you know the image he was trying to put on there is basically letting everybody know like yeah he's a gangster he's about that life he's a shooter xyz right? um and you know Charlemagne was critiquing him about music and and all that type of stuff but that's neither here nor there what i'm basically saying to you is y'all is this he's singing a whole nother tune now in you know 2024 you know we know that shine is you know, a little bit old, a little bit wiser, and now he's a politician. And now he doesn't want that particular stain on his name as far as um, him being, you know, a street guy. You know, according to him, nowadays he's talking like, you know, he never busted his gun before and he never did anything like that before. So, you know, here goes Shine talking about, um, talking now. Opens wounds um, when you hear, um, you know, the victim saying that it was... Diddy that shot her. That is what is the most remarkable. Oh, you didn't see that? I saw it. Okay. And that was triggered by a lawsuit 
from a producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations and in those accusations he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting and that is what stands out to me the most because I, you know I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward uh, and so um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy um, but my political enemies and you know detractors it opens try to make me into you know this criminal um, but everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the fall everyone knew that that was the story I'm just saying that I maintained my innocence all this time I said I was defending myself I didn't get into who did what um, but the victim is telling you who did what and another I, I understand that there are other witnesses is she, is she accurate sir I'm not going to get into that but it does open wounds and um, certainly I am relieved that uh, people are saying what the truth is that you know I did not uh, shoot um, those people I maintain that I never shoot nobody um, that there were other guns there I always said that that has not changed try to and that is the testimony that came out um, fragments were never removed uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was uh, but the victims are vindicating me uh, witnesses are vindicating me but I have I have moved on I, I'm not trying to relive that uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize uh, I wish him well I pray for him and I pray for the alleged victims and, and if if it is true may justice be served if it is not um, it, it, it's a tragedy because a, a, a global icon um, would have been destroyed and that's uh, I would say this pertaining to uh, Diddy. Um, did he do it? <laughs> if she was to ask me, uh, Shine definitely got locked, lined up. Did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, Diddy, why did you pay? I'm like, did he do it? Did he drug up? Did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, Diddy, why did you pay? I'm like, did he do it? Did he drug up? Did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, Diddy, why did you? You was an icon, nigga, you ruined it. Diddy documentary coming out, 50 cents shooting it. You ready? Okay, check this out. All I know is that the Diddy movie is gonna be lit, yo. That's a whole fact. Um, the documentary, whatever they got going on, I'll say this, man. From doing my research, you know, I would say that Diddy is definitely someone who, uh, Shine is definitely someone who took the rap for Diddy. You know what I mean? And he got set up. And I don't, I, I think Shine wanted to didn't want to take the rap for him, but he was set up by Diddy. Meaning that, you know, according to my research, Shine's lawyers were on Bad Boy's payroll. They were, those were Diddy's lawyers. Everything uh, was against Shine. There was no way that Shine was going to be able to beat that case. They needed somebody to serve that time for that shooting that happened in the club in New York City back in 1999 with Diddy Jailer when Shine was in the club. That's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even the victim... The victim of the particular uh, of the particular case even came out and said it was never Shine who shot her. The victim came out and said it was never Shine. She told everybody that, and that's the crazy part about it. What I don't understand that the person who is the victim that got shot is saying that it was never uh, it was never Diddy. Then why was Shine convicted? Because Shine was set up by Diddy and his lawyers and. Um, he was set up by the whole Bad Boy Records. He was set up. Um, Natalia Rubin is the victim who was shot in the face who survived that particular shooting. It was three, two other people, three people all together who were shot. Nobody was killed, if I'm not mistaken, but um, three people were shot in that club that day, that, that night, um, at the club in New York City. Um, so I was watching this um, short documentary, and it even explains here, Diddy even speaks up about the situation and talks about... Um, Exactly what happened. Um, here we go, right here, y'all. 
right. which destroyed me because the prosecution is saying I'm this belligerent, reckless, you know, okay corral. You understand? Are unacceptable. You don't have to hold my hand. You don't have to do nothing. But don't, don't try to hurt me. What continues to haunt Shine to this day is that Myers wasn't called by the prosecution, but rather by his co-defendant's legal team. In his eyes, a move that doomed his own defense. This woman was the most damaging witness of any witness. She was worse than the prosecution's witness. Right. Which destroyed me because the prosecution is saying I'm this belligerent, reckless, you know, okay, proud fella. And then my co-defendant is saying the same thing? That was it. That was it. MTV News recently asked Sean Combs to respond to Shine's allegations, and he emphatically refuted the rapper's interpretation of events. I did not force anybody or tell anybody to say anything that 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 would damage or hurt Shine's case. I just wouldn't do that. That that would not be my intent whatsoever. And you know that that's that's all I'm really going to say about the matter. Not to get into any negative back and forth, because y'all know me over the years on MTV News being involved in certain things. Right now, my life is positive and I'm, I'm gonna keep it like that. Just as damning as Sharice Meyer's testimony, according to Shine, was the team of lawyers. It, later on during this particular video that I'm showing y'all right now, Diddy is going to implicate that Shine was indeed the person who um, shot um, those people in the club. Pay attention. Years appointed to him by Sean Combs. Shine says Murray Richmond and others were at one time on the payroll of Combs' record label, Bad Boy. Because Puffy's defense implicated Shine in the shootings, Shine says having his own lawyers bankrolled by Bad Boy posed a conflict of interest. As I understand it anyway, um, the fact that your lawyers, as it turns out, originally were on Puff payroll, on the Bad Boy payroll, that's that's part of this current effort to, to get the case retried, right? More or less, more or less. You know, that's crazy how he had nobody there to give him some type of guidance or some counseling. Why would he have the lawyers from Bad Boy to try to proclaim him as being innocent if Diddy also was trying to fight the same case proclaiming that he's innocent? That's crazy. Even though Shine was very young at the time, and at the time of the shooting, his album didn't even come out yet. So he didn't even have any money like that. The odds were against this man no matter what. He couldn't even afford his own attorney. That's crazy. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about that and, and, and when you learned that they were on the bad boy payroll? Well, it was always on the payroll, you dig, but that was at a point where I thought that was my comrade. So, you know, I ain't have it, it like sense. that. Yeah, right. I, you know, I was just, I was a fledgling artist. Like, right. you know, I didn't, Shine album didn't come out yet. So He thought that Diddy and Bad Boy were his comrade, meaning that, they, that those are his friends, his homie. They had his best interests at heart. Damn. Ain't no friends on YouTube, and ain't no friends in the industry. <laughs> I don't really have it like that. But at the point where, you know, he calling the witnesses, you know, to do me dirty, then you understand that, you know, well, man, if these guys is working for him, oh, because I went to the judge like three times complaining about inefficiency with my lawyers because they was just dumbing out. Like, right. witnesses be on the stand. Yo, Shine had a better chance hiring a public pretender. <laughs> he had a better chance, and I'm saying pretender sarcastically speaking, speaking is really pub public defender. But he had a better chance of hiring a public defender to help him out in this case, as opposed to hiring the lawyers that's on Bad Boy's payroll. Ciao. <laughs> They would ask them two questions that didn't make sense and then sit down. It's obvious that they were selling me, you understand, in order to appease him. You know, there was a dual loyalty there. Shine's trial attorney, Murray Richmond, responded to Shine's accusations by telling MTV News in a statement, quote, I had absolutely no connection to Puffy Combs. My checks were handed to me by Shine. I'm sorry he feels animosity towards me. I wish him nothing but the best. Sean Combs echoed those sentiments, telling MTV News that despite Shine's charges, he remains supportive. I'm not forgetting about Sean. My prayers go out to him. Any support that, that, that is needed, you know, we here at Bad Boy, we still here for him. So Bad Boy cut Shine a check 
and recommended the lawyer that he should hire for the case, which was a lawyer that works with Bad Boy. Wow, they lined his ass up. <laughs> And you know, we know he's on Def Jam, and we, we wish him the best of luck. It was an unfortunate incident, nothing that the man didn't, um, meant to do. He was acting in self-defense. He didn't deserve 10 years, and that's my statement. As you know, Double XL reprinted an interview with you from a couple years ago. That's the part right there. That's the dime drop right there. Pay attention. He's supportive. I'm not forgetting about Sean. My prayers go out to him. Any support that, that, that is needed. You know, we here at Bad Boy. We still here for him. And, you know, we know he's on Def Jam. And we, we wish him the best of luck. It was an unfortunate incident. Nothing that the man didn't, um, meant to do. There's nothing that the man meant to do. That means he is basically pointing the finger and say, yeah, Shine didn't mean to shoot those people in the club. But it's an unfortunate situation. That right there is Diddy. After the case was over and he was profound guilty, Puffy, who was there, says that Shine was the one who shot those people in the club. Damn. That's crazy. Talk is cheap, motherfucker! He was acting in self-defense. He didn't deserve 10 years, and that's my statement. Acting in self-defense, and he didn't deserve them 10 years. So Puffy... Made it clear that it was Shine. According to him, it wasn't me that shot that lady. Even though the lady said it was me, it was Shine. You know, I saw a an interview with you from a couple years back. There's peace with your mom in there. And there's also a response from Puffy in there to some of, some of the allegations that are made that your mom makes. Can I ask you to respond to some of those? Puff in this, in this says that uh, from day one, he offered you his legal team as well. That he said that Johnny Cochran, his guys, could represent you as well. Categorically untrue. He says you offered to pay for your appeal. Absolutely. He said there's no beef between me and Shine. Absolutely not. Everything's cool between us. Would you agree with that? I mean, there is no me and, 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 and Shine, like this, you know. There's no relationship there to have a beef, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, he doesn't exist to me, and you know, it's just really that simple. Now, here is the young lady uh, who was uh, claims that Diddy was the one who pulled the trigger that day. You know what I mean? She um, seems like she was very um, coherent at the time and remember everything like as it was as if it was yesterday. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, um, her name is. Natanya Rubin. Listen to what she has to say, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, sharing her story. Natanya, thank you so much for being with us. I, I can't imagine uh, what you've been through since 1999 and then all the emotions that must be coming up uh, over the last couple of days. What, what was your reaction, Natanya, when you saw these massive raids uh, at P. Diddy's two homes? First and foremost, thank you for having me. Um, it was very emotional. In short, it was extremely emotional because it was basically a mark uh, 25 years, a quarter of a century since this occurred, and I've had to relive this over and over again intermittently in that time. So when I saw it, it was very cathartic because I finally felt like justice would be done, justice would be mine, and, and belong to all of us. Yeah, and you have said since really right after the shooting that it was P. Diddy who shot you. Um, I mean, I think you even said it to, to the doctor that night, right? I said it immediately. I literally pulled them, pull out the guns. I had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and have described it, you know, vehemently to all parties involved. I think in our society, we, we are, we have respectability policies. There are people who want to be adjacent to power or celebrity or money, and there's a hierarchy of respectability. Because his name was more notable, he was believed rather than a victim who gave the first hand account. By the grace of God, I survived. Yeah, and this was also a different time. I mean, things were very, very different in 1999. I mean, did you sense right from the beginning that no one believed you? Well, I, I don't think that was on my mind. I think first and foremost, I'm a mother. I'm a mother of three. At the time, I was a mother of two. And just surviving and getting home to my children was of the utmost importance to me. Being old and being able to mother them, that was, you know, primary on my list. <sighs> What's the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen? What's the moral of the story? The more the story is. Uh, did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, did he? Why did you pay? I'm like, did he do it? Did he drug? <laughs> did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, did he? Why did you pay? I'm like, did he do it? Did he drug up? Did he rape up? If you ain't do this shit, did he? Why did you? You was an icon, nigga. You ruined it. Did he documentary coming out? 50 cents shooting it. You ready? 
appreciate you guys.